to get for a, quant to a quantum theory of gravity is that space-time is not fundamental. Um, that space-time is, if you like, an effective emergent description from something else that underlies it. and experience, everything we call our familiar three-dimensional reality, may be a projection of information that's stored on a thin, distant, two-dimensional surface, sort of the way the information for this hologram is stored on this thin piece of plastic. cosmic microwave background image shows us the universe the way it was 13.7 billion years ago. A hot liquid 
vibrating with aftershocks of the Big Bang, like water rippling in a bathtub. So in some way, the universe vibrated like a, a piano or like a drum. So for instance, this is equivalent for the Big Bang. It's a complicated mixture of many harmonics, okay? And uh, now we have the fundamental harmonics, which gives the pitch. And after, the other harmonics are like this. And so on, okay? So uh, the full sound that we can uh, listen to is uh, a mixture of all these, uh, these, uh, these harmonics. But the number of harmonics you can hear depends on the size of the piano. The size of any musical instrument is finite. And uh, string, for instance, cannot vibrate uh, on wavelengths larger than the size of the string. So maybe if we observe that the universe didn't vibrate on very long wavelengths, maybe the explanation is that space uh, has a finite size. When Jean-Pierre analyzed the ripples in the cosmic microwave background, he found that the longest wavelength ripples were indeed missing. We are surprised because there was missing uh, wavelengths, missing fluctuation, missing low tones, you know, like low notes, very like, low, like this, okay? They are missing from the cosmic score. Jean-Pierre's passion for music gave him a profound cosmic insight that the universe appears to be finite. But what shape could it be? Jean-Pierre spends months carefully testing different shapes for his finite universe, trying to make it fit the vibrations of the cosmic microwave background as closely as possible, until finally, he finds the perfect fit. A 12-sided dodecahedron, a soccer ball. Here in my hands, I have two different kinds of the decahedra. The first one is just an uh, ordinary decahedron, namely 12 pentagonal faces arranged in a symmetrical manner. This is a figure known since antiquity. Uh, you, you see that the, pentagon, uh, the pentagons are flat, okay? Here, you have a different tiling uh, of the sphere. You see that the pentagons are curved, okay? Uh, so this is called the spherical of the decahedron. If Jean-Pierre is right, the shape of the universe is a lot more complex than a six-sided asteroid's game cube. The universe has 12 sides, and leaving one face leads you to a matching pentagon on the opposite side, but with a twist. This edge is exactly the same as the opposite edge. So uh, as soon as you get this point, you re-enter your space on the opposite side, and in addition, you have to turn by 36 degrees. If the universe were a dodecahedron only slightly bigger than Earth, light would zip around it in minutes, and you would see twisted copies of Earth in a dozen different directions in the sky. But if the edges of Jean-Pierre's dodecahedron are billions of light years apart, the distant and faint reflections on them could have escaped the notice of the most careful astronomers. And if the edges lie further than 13.7 billion light years from Earth, we would never be able to see them because our view would be blocked by the hot soup of the cosmic microwave background. 